Shall we start now? Yeah. Um, Salaamu Alaikum and Happy Ramadan to everybody. Uh, my name is Mani Hassamin. I am uh, a geotechnical engineer at a consultant in the UK. Um, I am interested in um, foundations, retaining walls, and also uh, in my previous career, I was working like uh, improving that the roads and pavements. So in my presentation today, so one of the sustainable uh, solutions is uh, using waste material as a stabilizer for a uh, road engineer. So, the, so we have published this research recently in uh, January 2021 uh, with the transportation infrastructure geotechnology. So the research is about effects of plastic waste materials on geotechnical properties of clay soil. Okay. In my presentation today, first of all, I'm gonna give an introduction about waste material and then share with you the problem statement. Why did we choose this? particular subject for the research. Then I'm going to talk about the aim and objectives of the research with presenting the case study that we have used for the uh, investigation. Then I will, uh, I'm going to present the methodology that have been followed for the materials and the laboratory test with presenting the results and discussion. Finally, we are going to give you some conclusions and recommendations about the research. For the introduction, sorry. How can I remove that? Sorry. So disposal waste material, now we know that's a universal issue, to be honest, and uh, everybody, is trying to go, uh, go ahead without having that issue. So according to Auchi 2019, the average plastic waste generation estimated at 15.4 billion pieces per day. That's annual, so that's world, worldwide. And that plastic waste materials are the most prevalent waste material, including the uh, polyethylene bottles and poly, pro plan PP. So we are going to call it P and PP through the research. Although we know that plastic materials are very important in our daily use, okay? However, these are going to uh, pose negative impacts on the environment and health. So that's why uh, a lot of countries are planning to reuse it because the majority of plastics are, non, are not uh, biodegradable, so can sustain for many years. So, one of the uh, uh, one of the, the methods to prevent the impact of plastic on the environment is the reuse reuse of the material or recycler. As a geotechnical aspect, so usually we have a stabilization process for the weak soils. For that stabilization, the traditional one, usually we would use cement and lime. This is what widely used for improve the properties of the weak soil. However, the high use of these materials, so make that material non-cost effective. So there are a lot of research have been done just to find an alternative cost effective soil stabilizer, such as using plastic materials, tire chips, and rice fuels. Using that plastic waste for soil stabilization can improve the foundation layer of pavement, and that's have been improved by several researchers uh, to find out the effectiveness of plastic waste material in the form of discrete fibers of properties so, of soil. However, it's important to find out and identify the effect of the length and content of fibers, plastic waste as fiber shaped material. So that are 
randomly distributed throughout the soil. So in this research, we are going to have a sensitivity analysis to find out what's the length and content of the fibers that have been used for the stabilized um, soil. The objectives is going to be a number of standard geotechnical laboratory tests were performed during the research. And these tests consist of soil index property, property standard com uh, compaction test, and unconfined compressive strength California varying ratio test and resilient modulus test. The idea of the research is coming from the case study that we have in Kurdistan uh, region in, in Iraq. Um, the city of Tehok, they have a problem with the waste material, the plastic waste material. According to Hannah and Musa reported that in city Tehok, which is here, so more than 5,000 tons of polyethylene is produced as waste material every year. So they, they want to find a way to reuse this material or recycle. The methodology that have been followed for our research, which is using these materials as these waste materials as a stabilizer within the soil in the area. So the soil have been chosen. It's a soil representative for the, uh, the case study is Haushki area, west of the Hawk city in Kurdistan region. This soil uh, classified as clay soil and according, according to the American Society for Testing, ASTA. And uh, we have 93% of salt and clay. The methodology that have been used for the waste material, for the plastic waste materials, for the PE, which are represented for the uh, water bottles, and the PP, which are for these woven uh, bags. So the material, the methodology have been used that plastic fibers were prepared by cutting waste bottles and bags into two sizes. So we have one uh, centimeter and two centimeter of length. So for both products, we have two different lengths, one centimeter and two centimeter with a width of uh, 25 to three millimeter each. The fiber content then have been used in the material and with to stabilize the soil in portion of 1%, 2%, 3%, and 4% of the dry weight of the clay soil. The methodology that have been followed for the laboratory test, we have used different laboratory tests, including, first of all, deter uh, determination of the index properties of the unsta unstabilized soil and the and standard Procter uh, test. That is very important, first of all, to find out the Maximum, uh, maximum dry density and optimum moisture content for each single case of stabilization and the native soil. So based on that, we are gonna do later on the research to find out the impact of the uh, soil properties. Uh, then we have uh, unconfined compressive strength test and California bearing ratio test and resilient modulus for stabilized and unstabilized soil. All of the other tests are according to ASTM, except the resilient modulus, which is conducted in accordance with ASHTO T307. For all of these tests, the adopted content of fibers was first manually mixed into the air dried soil in small increments. So that is very important in order to achieve the homogeneity of that mixture. Then, uh, during the mixing process, then the required water was added, which is this required water based on the optimum moisture content have been determined from the test. Then it was added as shown in this figure. Based on the real, uh, results and discussion, from the compaction test, we can see that this is the native, uh, this is the native uh, soil. And these are the soils that have additive, which are, let's say, the waste material have been added to the to stabilizer. So this is not representative on the impact as much as this is representative to find out exactly what is the portion of the, what's the optimum moisture content, what's the maximum 
uh, dry density for each case. So this is when we used uh, PE for one centimeter. This is the behavior when we have PE for, uh, with length of two centimeter. And this is the behavior when we have one centimeter of PP. And this is the behavior when we have two centimeter of PP. Then we have found out the unconfined compressive strength test. From the unconfined, uh, unconfined compressive test, so this is, will represent the native soil without any stabilizing. So then with, with adding that waste material, you can see that it has the um, unconfined compressive strength is increasing to a point and then reducing. So that means we have an optimum point, which is the optimum value of the fiber content, which can give us the highest unconfined compressive strength. So, but if you look at the behavior of the soil, you can see that PE is much more efficient than PP in this test. If we look at the California bearing ratio, CBR, for the CBR, you can see that without any fiber content, the CBR is four. However, with increasing, with adding the fiber content from 1% to 4%, you can see that the soil, the CBR is improved, is improved. However, still the PE is much more efficient than the PP, but still an improvement happened with the CBR with adding this material. Regarding the Rizalum modulus test, for the Rizalum modulus test for the fiber content, so this is for the native soil that we have. For example, for confined pressure, let's say 27.58, you can see that with a diabetic stress of, for example, 12.41. With the native soil, we have a resonant modulus percentage is 133.77, and this has been improved into 153.7, then improved even more and more and more. So with the resonant modulus, for the two centimeter length of PE, we can see the resonant modulus improved with adding the material. However, with the PP, um, with adding PP to the material for the two centimeter length, we can see for the same, for the same results, it is improved, but then it has been reduced, or we can say it is not that much. So the resonant modulus for the PP is, is showing an improvement. However, it's not clear exactly if we have, an, we may have an optimum moisture, an optimum, sorry, uh, resonant modulus at the early stage. In order to look at the uh, results, so we have calculated the improvement of the mechanical behavior of that soil stabilized with, uh, with the fiber, a uh, pavement section was analyzed using Canlea program. For simplicity, we have used the linear elastic method for the design. In that design for the Canlea design, for the pavement design, we have assumed the layer, asphalt concrete layer, sub-base and sub -grade. For the asphalt concrete layer, the thickness is 0.1, and we assume for the sub-base 0.2, the resonant modulus we assume 4,000 megapascal and 200 megapascal with 0.4 and 0.3 Poisson ratios. These values are going to be constant during the analysis of uh, using the can layer. The only variable will be the subgrade, and this is going to be a resonant modulus from the test results. So we are going to adopt in the program to find out the pavement design. You can see from the using the PE with the fiber content 
the deflection was 0.678. However, that deflection have been reduced with increasing the fiber content. Also, the, verti the vertical strain, you can see it has been reduced. We can say that it is improved, yeah? So, this will bring me to the end of my presentation. In conclusion, so this research was conducted in order to find out the impact of waste material on the uh, improving the soil property. Using that, so we have used different kinds of test, uh, laboratory tests. The only thing that we can see that it is simply we can use these waste materials that we can find into disposal bins. We can use them as a stabilizer. During the analysis, we have seen that the soil stabilization with the fiber, with the fiber has different trends for the unconfined compressor strain and the resolute modulus. We, can, we could see that with increasing the fiber content, is not resulting always to increase the unconfined compressor strain. While for the resolute modulus, increase the fiber content can, re, uh, can result in increase in resolute modulus. Therefore, it's important to find out the optimum fiber content that we need to use for the stabilization for the highest values of the unconfined compressor strain and resolute modulus. However, for the CBR and the resolute modulus, with increasing the fiber content, result in increasing the value of the unconfined compressor strain. Sorry. Uh, so with increase uh, in the increase in the value, so we can see it is increasing. For the unconfined compressor strain, the optimum fiber content could be found between one percent and two percent for both PE and PP. So we can see from that result these small portion of the fiber content can have more impact than the others. Then PE and PP can efficiently be used really to improve the physical and strength properties of soil materials as a foundation for engineering projects. The length of that, however, I would say in this point, sorry, we could say what PE show more efficient than PP for the stabilization. The length of the fiber showed that it has an impact on the um, and it has an impact on the strength properties of the stabilized soil. As increasing the length will result in higher strength in the properties. This may require even needs more research for the future. Uh, uh, for the future research, this is to find out the optimum length of the that give us highest strength property. For those in the broad pavement design, codes of practice that use for uh, the CBR and resolute modulus as design parameters, the fiber stabilization could assume that as a cost effective and it can be used successfully for the sustainable road construction if compared with the chemical traditional one. The stabilization with chemical agents is a combined by carbon dioxide emission while fiber stabilization is not. This is one of the advantages of fiber stabilization over chemical stabilization. Um, this is the city of uh, the Hawk. Just I wanted to share this with you because it seems a very beautiful uh, city and it's nice to protect it from this waste material. Thank you so much. If you have any question, please feel free. I'm happy to answer. Thank you, Dr. Malih. We are waiting for any questions for Dr. Malih. Okay, so if you don't have a question, but uh, I would like to tell you that we, I have already put the link for the 
paper. If anybody interested in that paper, so, and if you have any question, please feel free and email me. I am more than happy to answer. So do we have any question now? There is a question in the chat from Talal Ahmed. He asked about <clears throat> if you have used the powder plastic material or used the shredded plastic, plastic material. Powder must, uh, okay. So we usually just use that material and fiber. So we cut it into fibers. That's the only thing that we have used. It's just normal, it's very simply using the waste material is itself. So using the powder material may maybe will have more impact, but again, so it may be, that's a good research if somebody can do it. Yeah, it's a good point. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Maliha, for this presentation. Thank you. There okay. is a question also from Talal. What are yes. your views regarding the rubber waste? Sorry, uh, I'm not sure. Can you repeat the question or maybe in other words? In, in the chat, what are your views regarding the rubber waste? He asked about the rubber waste. Rubber waste, uh, sorry, how can I see the chat? Behind the participant, behind the, beside the button of the chair screen, tire rubber waste. Yeah. Talal, you can open the mic and uh, ask Dr. Maliha. Yes, yes please. Yes, please. Uh, my question is uh, regarding the tire rubber material waste. Uh, uh, as you uh, delivered your lecture regarding the plastic waste. So uh, what are the factors and uh, improvement and enhancement uh, while using the tire rubber material in the uh, soil stabilization method? It's been like a, a part of admixture. The tire material. The tire rubber material. Uh, it can be a, a natural source or it can be an artificial. Like uh, uh, likewise in India and Pakistan, many of the authors uh, have published a paper regarding the, uh, that particular tire rubber material. Uh, they haven't been focusing on that particular. Um, no, to be honest, uh, we have focused particularly using this waste material. Yeah, there is a lot of research have been done. Really, it's appreciation that uh, a lot of researchers have been focused on reusing these waste materials. Uh, however, our research is uh, some, it's to focus on the use uh, of these waste materials because in the case study in the whole city, they do have a problem with uh, 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 in a waste material of uh, water bottles and the bags. Yeah. I hope this is answering your question. Uh, sure, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, Dr. Maleha. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you. Uh, I have another question regarding to the response of uh, native soil uh, under uncompleted compressive strains. You show us the response uh, uh, of uh, PE and PP under one percent and two percent, I think. Um, okay. The unconfined compressive strength. Unconfined compressive strength, yeah. Yeah, this one, yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, here, uh, could you show us the the response of native soil? 
without any okay. uh, additional? Uh, to be honest, because we are looking at the stabilizer, so this point, the point here, this is what we have for the soil itself, native soil. So it is 150. So this point representative for the native soil. So the improvement happened from here. Is that clear? So 150, that represents the unconfined compressive strength of the native soil. And with adding the material with different uh, fiber contents, with different length, different materials, PP and PE, so it is improved even more. Yeah? Okay, I got it. Uh, another question regarding to your mixture, you added 101 uh, it's uh, by weight or by vol volume? Of the dry weight. By weight. Yeah, in the methodology, yes. In the methodology, we said of the dry weight of the clay soil. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Any questions else for Dr. Maliha? Okay, thank you, Dr. Maliha, for this presentation. Thank you so thank much. Thank you for participating in the yes. second the JR model. Thank you. Thank you. The second topic will be about the review of the seismic pile response in the liquefiable soils. Will be presented by engineer Ahmed Fouad. Engineer Ahmed Fouad is a PhD candidate at the Faculty of Engineering, Western University, Canada. He obtained his master's degree from Alexandria University in Egypt. He worked as a civil engineer with more than five years of experience, including analyzing and designing marine structures, high-rise building bridges, tunnels, and retaining structures. He will be available within minutes. Hello, Abdullah. Thank you for uh, introducing me. My name is uh, uh, Ahmed Fouad. It's nice to, to talk to you today, guys. So in order to save the time, I will start with my presentation. So I'm... Um, sharing my screen now. So you can see my screen, I can see my presentation. Yeah. Okay. So hello everyone. Today I'm going to present a review about the seismic behavior of non-liquefiable and liquefiable soil. So let's start with the history of, of liquefaction. After Niigata earthquake on June 16, 1964, severe damaging to many structures were observed, especially for a structure in the top of saturated loose deposits. So after Niigata earthquake, the devastating effect brought the attention of researcher to liquefiable liquefaction phenomena. Let's see what is liquefaction phenomena. When we have a structure, and this structure is situated on the top of loose sand soil, and there is a level of the water in the ground. So during the earthquake, the water starts to propagate up to this level, and the effective strength start to decrease because of the excess poor water pressure, and then the structure start to settle. There are different damaging can be observed due to liquefaction phenomena. One of the major observation is the structure start to tilt without any structure uh, problem. As we can see after Niigata earthquake, the structure here is intact structurally and the concrete is perfect. However, the structure loses its, uh, its serviceability after it uh, tilted to its side. One of the other damaging of the liquefaction after 
after the earthquake, the structure start to after the earthquake, one of the major observation is soil boiling, where the sand start to boil like, like as we can see, and there will be a problem with the ground. So how can we mitigate the problems of liquefaction if we have building? So as I mentioned, the excess pore water pressure start to raise and that ex expose the layer to liquefaction and the soil start to lose its shear strength. One of the solution is using shallow foundation, but the problem with the shallow foundation, it will transfer the loot to the liquefiable layer, which will expose the foundation and the building to a significant settlement due to liquefaction. So if we have a building, as we can see, and we this building is located uh, in the top of the ground, and we have a water level, and this water level is in, uh, is in la the loose sand layer, so, during the earthquake, the water start to propagate and this structure will settle. So what is the main solution for, for the problem? It's by transferring the loot from the weak layer to the strong layer. We can do this through piles. So if we started to transfer the loot of the pile to the, uh, to the strong layer, now we can get, uh, mitigate some of the problem of the liquefaction. So, in order to study this, we have to understand the behavior of the liquefiable soil in order to mitigate it. So the behavior and the expected failure mechanism due to liquefaction depend in several factors. So in order to know the factors that affect liquefaction, one of the most important factor is the ground motion intensity and also its duration because liquefaction is depend on the number of big cycles of acceleration which triggers the liquefaction phenomena. Also, the Loose sand relative density is one of the main factors that trigger liquefaction because if the sand is loose, that make it more susceptible to liquefy. However, if the sand is dense and the, there is a minimum uh, voids ratio between the particles, that decrease the liquefaction phenomena. Also, the drainage condition, if there is a drainage condition up and down the sand, that makes it more uh, less susceptible for liquefaction because the water can escape. It will not start to raise. The, the other thing is the pile group configuration, the spacing between the pile and the diameter of piles. And we already just published a paper to, uh, uh, mentioning that if the bile uh, the change of the bile diameter affect the triggering of liquefaction, even if the in the dense sand. So, how can we assess the liquefaction phenomena? Enormous research has been conducted to assess the bile response through physical modeling, numerical modeling, and pseudostatic approach. The one kind of the physical modeling is the shaking tables test, where we can simulate the bile group and the bile, either the bile individually or the bile group, and theory of shaking table test, where we can expose the structure and the foundation to different situations such as stratification of soil, and the ground also can be inclined to expose it to a different phenomena called lateral spreading, as we're going to mention it later, and also we can locate the water table at different depths. Also, we can expose this shaking table to different intensities of shaking and also in different direction, either in double direction or we also can expose the shaking table to a vertical uh, acceleration. The other kind of physical modeling is the centrifuge test. Centrifuge test is very important techniques to simulate the soil bile structure interaction in order to collect data, we can use it later uh, for numerical modeling. As we can see, as we can see later, we have the foundation here with the vial, and we can see that the foundation, uh, sorry, the soil is stratified into multiple layer. It can be also inclined, and we can use different Gs to expose the, uh, the, uh, the foundation to uh, more realistic situations. So, why do we use physical modeling? Physical modeling is very important technique that we can use it to collect a lot of data, enormous amount of information, that we can use this information to understand the behavior of the soil by the structure interaction. But these experiments are so expensive. So in order to 
understand the response and to like to study different parameter, we can use numerical modeling. Numerical modeling is advantage of the numerical modeling. Once we calibrate and validate one of the physical modeling, we can use the numerical modeling to simulate the soil bile structure interaction, and we can measure different parameters and different things that we couldn't obtain from the physical modeling easily. We can measure them in the finite element and uh, in the modeling and numerical modeling analysis. One of the techniques that uh, we can use in the numerical modeling is the finite element analysis, where we can sim simulate the whole problem with the different boundary condition, and we can measure the lateral displacement and the vertical displacement and the straining action in the vial and other, uh, other measurements that we can obtain. Also, the advantage of the numerical modeling that we can conduct a parametric study to study the variability of different parameters, such as the soil parameters or the structure element or strength. The problem with the, with the finite element analysis or the numerical modeling in general is uh, that we can describe it as it's uh, an expensive computational because how much can you imagine the cost for a finite element analysis and how much expertise it's required in order to be uh, in order to be able to simulate uh, a problem with the right boundary condition and how much is the time that you need to simulate this problem that's why because of uh, because of the complication of the numerical modeling scientists and researchers started to uh, to relate this to simplified approach. Our simplified approach can be something like PIM on nonlinear Winkler foundation, where we can simulate the bile as 1D element and the soil as a spring with BY. And depending on the code you are using, you can simulate your problem. Also, if we are, if, if the bile is located in a saturated situation, we can. Uh, reduce the parameter or the stiffness of the soil to in order to account for liquefaction. One of the other techniques for the pseudostatic approach is called elastic beam theory, where we can simulate the bile as 1D element, like a column in the soil, and the part where the soil is unsupported laterally because of liquefaction, because we know that if the soil started to lose its strength because of liquefaction, the bile start to lose the lateral support, like now it's become like a column which is not supported laterally. So scientists start to relate this uh, as depending on this approach of uh, column with no support laterally to simulate the bile in the li liquefiable soil. And depending on the elastic uh, equation, we can calculate the straining action such as the bending moment. And also we can calculate the deflection of the bile. So lateral failure of the bile. There are, in order, before we start this, there are three main failures of the bile in liquefiable soil. First thing is the lateral failure response and the vertical failure response and the buckling failure. We will start now with the lateral failure of the bile. The reduction in the effective stress caused deterioration in the lateral subgrade reaction. We know this is because the reduction in the effective strength. So if we have this curve, which is a very famous curve, we, with the increase of the excess pore water pressure, as we can see that the strength and the stiffness of the soil start to decrease tremendously, which is very important to notice because that's how we're going to design our pile. Also, the theory or the chronological approach of the propagation of the motion is like this. At the beginning, when the, when the motion start to blow or hit at a specific area, the, the inertia force comes from the weight of the bile cap itself and the structure uh, over the bile cap will start to cause bending moment and deformation on the bile. That's not that most dangerous thing because once the soil uh, start to approach liquefaction, the, liqu the bending moment and the deflection will start to increase tremendously. And this will start to exaggerate when we reach, when we reach to the soil or if the ground is, uh, is inclined because this will, exp uh, 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 this will expose the pile to a phenomena called lateral spreading. 
which will induce more bending moment and deformation on the pile. We know we have to understand also by the end of the motion that doesn't mean that the the, the soil start uh, stop to move because there will be a residual, a residual ground displacement after the earthquake. So there will be some bending moment and some deformation by the end of the motion. Also the lateral spreading, we can, there is a lot of research has been done on the lateral uh, response of the bile in liquefiable soil during the earthquake. So in order to summary the response of, uh, or the lateral response of the bile, we say that the bile lateral resistance deteriorate with the reduction of the relative density. As we can see with the, with the decrease of the relative density of the soil, the stiffness of the soil also start to decrease, which expose the bile to more uh, or higher straining action. The higher ground motion, which act as a kinematic force, causes increase in the bile bending moment through the liquefiable layer, especially at the intersection between the layer. So a lot of research has studied where we can find the maximum uh, bending moment. And they found that the, inter uh, the intersection between the layers, this is the place where we can find the maximum moment because of the different and the stiffness of the soil. Also, the coupling between the kinematic force from the uh, from the ground motion with the inertia force from the superstructure mass that complicates the issue more, which make it the behavior more complicated and expose the bile to a significant bending moment. The existence of the clay layer as uh, as a crust on the top of the liquefiable layer that exposes the, the whole response to be more uh, dangerous because the clay causes uh, more lateral pressure on the on the bile and that exposes it to a higher moment. Also, the existence of the clay, as we mentioned before, that the drainage condition is one of the most important factors that can trigger liquefaction. So the existence of the clay as a non-liquefiable material can accelerate and exaggerate the situation of the liquefaction. Finally, if the ground is sloped, we will witness another, uh, beha another behavior which is called lateral spreading, and this will expose the bile to higher displacement and a higher bending moment. For, for decades, researcher has been concerned with studying the lateral response of the bile, as it's one of the most important and most dangerous things that can expose the bile to failure. Until recently, when the researcher started to find that other failure mechanism can be observed after the earthquake wakes. So they started to relate this failure to the loss of the bearing capacity of the bile in the liquefiable soil when the soil start to reach liquefaction. So the axial capacity of the bile has been well established in static cases and the dynamic axial response recently uh, concerning the researchers since a lot of failure cases were related to the bearing capacity failure. During the earthquake, the excess pool water pressure reduced the effective strength, then the soil uh, shear strength also is reduced. Therefore, the bile shaft resistance decreases and reaches zero, with excess pool water pressure ratio of one. So when the, bile, when the soil reaches liquefaction state, that means at this moment, the effective strength reaching zero. And if we looked at the static equation of the bearing capacity, we will find that the friction resistance of the bile is a, fact, uh, is, uh, is a function of the effective strength. So if the effective stress reaches zero, that means that the shear strength or the shaft friction of the bile will deteriorate. So. As we can see with the increase of the poor water pressure, there will be an increase in the shaft resistance, which I will explain why this increase at this time in a while. And then this will, when the, bile, uh, when the soil start uh, to reach liquefaction with the excess poor water pressure reaching one, that means that the, the shaft uh, friction will deteriorate and it will reach zero. So, in order to understand why the shaft friction has increased even more the static uh, static condition, that will be because of this. During the built up of the poor water pressure, the bile will start to settle because the bile uh, need to 
uh, mobilize its bearing capacity. At the time when the bile is settling to mobilize the end bearing capacity, at this moment, there will be like an increase in the shaft resistance to make up this reduction. In order to understand what's happening, but before I mention this, there are different conditions for the end bearing capacity. The end bearing capacity can decrease or can increase. The end bearing capacity can increase if the ground, if the bile cap, if the bile cap itself is situated on the ground level. But if the bile cap is above the ground level, we will not notice that the bile will maintain settling and it will always lose the bearing capacity. In order to understand the increase of the shaft resistance during the reduction of the bearing capacity, uh, that will be because of this. We have to know that the excess bore water pressure start to decrease when we are closer to the bile. Because at the bile, because of the vibration of the bile, the, there will be a gap. This gap will cause dissipation of the excess pore water pressure, which will cause reduction in the excess pore water pressure ratio. If we look here closely at the excess pore water pressure before it reach the ratio of one, we will find there are moments when the excess pore water pressure start to reduce. At this moment, if we look at the curve at the same time for the shaft friction, these are the times when we retrieve some of the shaft friction. So we witness positive shaft friction during the propagation of the excess pore water pressure before we reach liquefaction state. But when the when the excess pore water pressure reach the ratio of one, the shaft friction will reach to zero. The last kind of failure, sorry, is the last kind. Oh, we still have some slides about the bearing capacity. So in order to assess the bearing capacity failure, there are some equations here. One of the main equation to calculate the end bearing capacity in the liquefiable soil, we can see that Depending on the depending on the uh, bearing capacity in the static cases, and depending on the excess pore water pressure and the initial effective stress and the friction angle, we can calculate the end bearing capacity in the liquefiable soil. So you can calculate the end bearing capacity from your static uh, equations, and you can calculate the excess pore water pressure from the free field analysis. Uh, there are a lot of softwares we can talk about them in a while and you can calculate the effective strength and you already have your friction angle so you can calculate the end bearing uh, capacity uh, for liquefaction state also uh, there are uh, equation which depend on the settlement uh, doesn't increase than 10 percent of the bile diameter so we can calculate the factor of safety depending on the uh, excess pore water pressure ratio as well. As we can see until now uh, that the excess pore water pressure ratio is one of the important measurements that you have to understand and we have to measure in order to assess the capacity and to control the failure of the bile. The last failure mechanism we are going to discuss today is the bile buckling failure. Short columns usually fail in crushing, while long columns fail in buckling. And our bile, when it's located in uh, liquefiable soil, at this time, the, the, the soil is, uh, is not giving lateral support to the bile. That means the bile can act as a long column. Depending on the bile flexure rigidity, the kinematic force results in bending moment in the bile from the free field motion. And the superstructure generates an inertia force when it is foliate, which is translated as a lateral force and the bending moment on the cap. The expo that, ex that expose the bile to more axial load and lateral load causing additional bending moment. Let's think about what's going on. If we have a bile and this bile has an axial force at its top. So when the earthquake comes, it will start to move the bile laterally, especially at the top. So what happened to the axial bile at the top? It will, be, it will, not, be, it will not be at 
the center of the uh, of the bile now so there will be an eccentricity so with more axial load that will cause more uh, with more uh, bending moment on the bile which will cause eventually uh, if this axial load is large that will initiate plastic uh, yielding and we can see plastic hinge in the uh, in the bile so how can we design against buckling? Some research has been conducted to study the buckling behavior of the bile in liquefiable soil. And they started to give us a guideline that we can use in order to, uh, in order to simulate or in order to choose the right length and the right diameter of the bile in liquefiable soil. They depended on the earlier effective length. As we can see this from our undergrad study that when we were studying buckling, we can see depending on the length of the bile in the liquefiable uh, uh, layer, we can calculate the effective length of the bile. Also, the study is started to give us some recommendation for the length of the bile and, and how can we control the factor of safety of the buckling. The lateral load caused lateral deflection. We already know this by now, which is amplified due to the axial uh, force. So when we have an axial force and the bile is moving laterally, it will be amplified because of this axial force. So they started to calculate a ratio between the, uh, the, uh, uh, the amplified one and the original one. And they refer to it as a buckling uh, amplification factor. Also, as we can see here in this graph, we can see depending on the axial load and the buckling load, we can calculate we can, we can uh, draw this uh, graph between the buckling amplification factor and the, uh, uh, and the axial load and the allowable buckling load or allowable axial buckling load. And depending, as we can see, if the axial load increases until it reaches one by the increase, we can see that the buckling amplification factor also increase until it reaches to higher factor. Also, in order to design against the buckling, uh, the research gave us a guideline to choose the bile lens by drawing the, the graph of the allowable load and the graph of the buckling where uh, the buckling load, the intersection between the buckling load and the allowable axial load will give us the perfect or the ideal uh, bile lens. So now we already calculated the bile lens. In order to design against the diameter of the bile, that will depend on the thickness of the liquefiable layer and also on the material of the bile. If the bile is concrete or steel tubular bile, and we already know the thickness of the liquefiable layer, you can calculate the diameter of the bile. Thank you and I would be happy to receive any question. Thank you, Engineer Ahmed, for this presentation. We are waiting for any questions for Engineer Ahmed. Can I ask a question, please? Yeah, okay. sure. Yeah. Um, so from the research, which is really interesting, it's a very good subject. Um, so you mentioned that uh, if we use finite element, it will be uh, expensive computationally. Um, yes. I agree with you. I agree with you with that. However, in case, if we are going to use it, so what are the objectives are going to be for the, the, for the analysis and what are the variables if we are gonna conduct a, par a parametric study? Is it going to be the bearing factor of safety buckling and the parameters will be pile length, diameter, distance? Okay, I agree with you that the using of finite element can be computationally expensive, but that doesn't mean that it can't be obtained. There are di like different software that we can use them, which is they are free. One of the most important software that we can use for the soil bile structure interaction, which is during the earthquake is OpenSeas. OpenSeas is an open source that we can use it fairly, but one of the issue of the OpenSeas is 
it doesn't have a graphic user interface. So all your code or, or, or your uh, model will be some kind of script. And in order to be able to simulate your problem, you have to write your model and the output will be some kind of funky. It's just like some, um, some like text files and text files some have uh, some numbers inside. Yeah. In order to be able to visualize your results, it will require some post-processing software. There are different uh, kind of software for this, such as Guide or Stoco. But uh, at the same time, you can conduct your parametric study and you can have the control over your, your model with, uh, with no problem. But there are other software which can be very expensive and the computational would take a long time and it requires uh, like uh, a very rigorous uh, so, uh, uh, computers. So yeah. one of these uh, software such as Midas GTS NX, this is one of the models that I have uh, been um, modeling for a client a while ago. And yes. he was interested in simulating the response of the soil bile structure interaction uh, in, liquefiable, in liquefiable soil. Uh, yeah. In order to understand uh, what's going on with the, with, the, with the model, there are different, different boundary conditions that we have to include in this model. Uh, I was about to discuss this model, but I was a uh, run of time. But if yes. I'm, I'm looking at the main parameters, it's so, it's so straightforward. You just create your geometry, you bought your uh, bile and you bought your interface. But what is important in the soil bile structure interaction in the dynamic analysis is if you have a load on the top of the foundation, you have to transfer this load into mass because uh, yes. during the earthquake, we use masses. Also, you have to include a free field, uh, like a layer, uh, uh, like a boundary condition to simulate that the extension of the soil from different uh, side, which will, uh, it can be done with different techniques in Midas GTS and X. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, also, uh, you have to include in the boundary, uh, in the boundary condition, uh, uh, like um, fixed uh, base. Uh, and also in the analysis, you have to perform your eigen uh, value, uh, eigen analysis in order to conduct, uh, to obtain the most, uh, like the critical uh, frequencies or the time. And if we went to the nonlinear analysis here, we will find that it's important to go to analysis control uh, and to define uh, the K node condition uh, for the in situ uh, uh, stresses. And also in the dynamic part, you have to account for the really damping. So you have to include the frequency and you have to include the damping ratio and you have to account for this damping ratio in all uh, layers. And some other like some other techniques in, in in the model. That's why uh, finite element analysis it requires an extensive knowledge of what's going on in order to do it. And if I went to OpenSeas for example and I'm simulating a, a simulating a shaking table, I will find that I can't use GTS and X in this problem. However, I have to use either Abacus or to use OpenSeas, which are more uh, more complicated than my DAS GTS and X, because I have to assign some kind of boundary condition called tie boundary condition, which is not exist in my DAS GTS, uh, GTS and X, which makes the complication as uh, a computation is more complicated. So if I don't understand what's going on between the different softwares, it's easier to go for the pseudo-static approach to give me a straightforward uh, answer. And most of the geotechnical engineers prefer this kind of analysis because it's, it's simple. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank there you. There is another question from Omar Mahdi. How can a PY method account for the liquefaction in the pile modeling? Okay, Omar. And if we went back to the presentation. Like that's a really a big, uh, a big topic. But if we went back here, uh, you already can like, uh, like the BY, the BY curve is considered or represent or show us the stiffness of the soil. So you can 
reduce the stiffness of the soil if you want to throw the equation of the by curve uh, you will find that there are uh, factors that um, uh, that's attached with the excess pore water pressure ratio uh, and if you use the excess pore water pressure ratio from the free field analysis, you can reduce uh, the, this factor in the BY curve. And in simulation, you use the reduced value. So you can uh, use it for the analysis. In order to do this, you have first to account for the, you have to first to use to account for the, uh, the sorry you have to calculate first the, the free field analysis so you have to calculate the excess pore water pressure ratio then i already like have a code here like i can uh, just open it for a second um just give me one second So this is this is a code uh, this is a code that I developed uh, for uh, for liquefaction. So where you can just assign your parameter of the curve here, and you start to reduce it. Like you will find in this calculation, there will be values that can be reduced. So one of the other uh, this is one of the techniques that if you are writing your code. But if you are simulating this using a software like OpenSeas, you will find that one of the template of the uh, of the material it's called uh, BY symbol and BY liquefiable. What is the difference between both? In order to make it easy to understand, the BY symbol it's uh, it goes with the specific equations from the different uh, codes, and for the like ABI uh, or, or like uh, Bench, Bench Hansen or, or a different like or different researcher has conducted a lot of research related to the EY curve. But if you want to other soft like the software and you decided to choose the BY curve, what is uh, liquefiable? So what is happening in this uh, category? It uses the same equation exactly, but in order to account for liquefaction you have to obtain the result from free field analysis where the excess pore water, you can obtain the pore water pressure uh, and also you can obtain the effective st uh, stress because it decreased because of the excess pore water pressure using this excess pore water, re re reduced excess pore water pressure and the, uh, that will enable you to calculate the uh, BY curve. So all what happening is in this in, in here you account for calculating the uh, strength of the soil, but in the uh, liquefiable uh, calculation you account for the effective uh, stress, which is reduced because of the excess pore water pressure. Thank you, Omar. Thank you, Ahmed. Any Thanks. questions as for an engineer, Ahmed? Okay, thank you, Ahmed. Thanks, Abdul. Thank you, everyone, for listening, and Ramadan Karim. Thank you. The third topic for today was supposed to be the case studies and the geotechnical cha challenges presented by Engineer Mohammed Asim, but Engineer Mohammed Asim apologized uh, that uh, that he have an exam today. So we'll talk about the fourth topic which is the performance of the passive loaded piles in the multi-layer soil presented by me.
Hello, everybody. We will start the fourth topic, which is about the analytical and the 3D numerical modeling of the passive loaded pile group in a multi-layered soil presented by uh, me. The presentation outlines will be about the introduction, uh, analytical and empirical methods dealing with the passive loaded piles, case study, and the numerical analysis for the case study, and conclusions. When we start to talk about the lateral pile soil and in structure interaction, we should differentiate between uh, the active pile loading and the passive pile loading. The term active pile loading is used when we uh, describe the conventional loading where the pile is subjected to external load or a moment normal to the pile head, while the passive loading, uh, the pile is subjected to lateral movement from the surrounding soil where the uh, soil displacement is higher than the pile displacement and the difference between the soil and pile displacement will resulted in the passive loading uh, on the pile. Examples for the passive loaded piles, the piles adjacent to the embankments, pile adjacent to excavation, pile adjacent to the tunnel operations, pile adjacent to the pile dripping, or the piles used for the slope stabilization. Also, we have uh, if we have a, a, a bridge apartment or the apartment wall supported on a pile cap, supported on uh, uh, piles, front pile and the rear pile, the existence of the embankment behind the apartment wall and above a soft clay layer cause a lateral stress acting on the wall and the shear stress at the interface between the embankment and the soft layer and the embankment uh, cause a vertical stresses on the soft layer, which, uh, which will be a lateral squeeze and cause a passive loading on the pile rolls. Let's start talk about the analytical and the empirical methods dealing with the passive piles. This analytical and the empirical methods can be used in the preliminary assessment of the maximum bending moment on the passive piles and the maximum displacement. First, uh, we will start with the empirical methods proposed by Otoyo and the steward, in which the, in the empirical methods, the maximum moment and the maximum displacement can be estimated from the design charts developed from experimental data, or we can use a pressure-based methods. Pressure-based methods started by Pegaman and, and by the German recommendation proposed by E.E. E. Feifel in uh, 2012. In the German recommendation or in the pressure-based methods, a pressure distributions acting on the file are estimated. This pressure distribution can be used to calculate the maximum moment of the file. Third, we will talk about the displacement-based methods. In the displacement-based methods started by course in 1973, the displacement-based methods we uh, propose, uh, we estimate a distribution for the lateral soil displacement. This lateral soil displacement can be used to calculate the maximum moment and the maximum displacement. We will start to uh, talk in details with uh, these methods for the empirical-based method, uh, for the empirical-based methods proposed by Otoyo uh, and developed by Stewart. In 1992, this, uh, in this empirical methods, Otoyo presented a design chart to calculate the maximum moment, and then uh, Stewart developed a design chart to, uh, to calculate the maximum displacement function in the relative pile stiffness, and he applied this method for the flexible pile, piles only. We use these uh, charts. We use the first uh, chart. Uh, to calculate a two-dimensional variables. In the first chart, we calculate the relative stiffness, which is equal to the flexural pile stiffness over the youngest modulus of the soft layer multiplied by the thickness of the soft layer to the power four. We enter the chart with the value of the relative stiffness to calculate the non-dimensional variable, which is a YQ, and we use a second chart to calculate the MQ. We use this line when the ratio of the embankment load over the undrained shear strength of the soft layer is higher than three. And we use this range of the values between the blue line and the orange line when the, uh, the ratio between the embankment and the undrained shear strength of the soft layer is less than three. 
when we enter this chart, we calculate the YQ value and the MQ value. Then we use these two equations to calculate the maximum moment, delta M maximum, and to calculate the uh, maximum displacement on the pile. These equations are also function in the pile diameter and function with the pile head fixity conditions using the variable H equivalent. Second, we will talk about the pressure-based methods started by Dupere and Wells in 1972. In this pressure-based method, he proposed the analytical method based on the experimental result. This analytical method consider the, uh, the slope of the embankment and the relative position of the pile uh, to the embankment and the applicability condition for this method that the overall stability factor of the embankment should be greater than 1.6. He assumed that a lateral pressure, a constant lateral pressure distribution act along the pile in the soft layer. The value of the lateral pressure distribution is equal to the embankment stress multiplied by a reduction factor, F. This reduction factor is multiplied function in the uh, slope of the embankment and the angle of friction of the soft layer. Also with the height of the embankment edge. So we can calculate the lateral pressure distribution on the pile. Using the this value of the lateral pressure distribution, we can calculate the maximum bending moment on the pile using the following equation, which is equal to a lateral pressure multiplied by the pile diameter multiplied by the thickness of the soft layer to the power two over eight. Uh, we see in this pressure phase the method proposed by the pair that the a lateral pressure is function in the, uh, the vertical stress of the embankment B. Also, the pressure phase the method that, that proposed by Chepetoryov in, in 1973, uh, he recommended that this method could be used when the, the ratio between the embankment stress and the undrained shear strength of the soft layer is higher than three. In this method, he assumed a triangular lateral pressure distribution along the pile. The value of the maximum uh, lateral pressure, uh, the value of the max is the maximum value can be calculated using two approaches. The first approach, the pH equal K node multiplied by the sigma Z. Sigma Z is the vertical stress at the mid depth of the soft layer multiplied by the pile diameter. While the second approach is to calculate the maximum value of the lateral pressure we're using the second equation, which is equal to 0.8 in diameter of the pile, multiplied by the gamma of the embankment, multiplied by the height of the embankment. We use the maximum value of the lateral pressure distribution to calculate the maximum moment, and we use <coughs> and we use uh, uh, this di distribution, a triangular lateral pressure distribution with the maximum value at the mid depths and zero at the interface between the embankment and the soft layer and the interface between the soft layer and the stiff sand layer or the dense sand layer in the pot. After that, we calculate two variables, which are the A, variable A, which is equal to the thickness of the soft layer divided by two, and we change the lateral, uh, we change the triangular lateral pressure distribution, we calculate, we change it to a force which is equal to 0.45 pH multiplied by the thickness of the soft layer. After that, we can calculate the value of the maximum moment at the pile head, which is equal to an MP, or the value of the maximum moment at the mid depth of the clay layer using this pressure phase the method, which is also function in the uh, stress of the, uh, in the vertical stress of the embankment layer. The third pressure phase the method will talk about the plasticity solutions. The plasticity solutions are proposed by a different researchers. The plasticity solutions are recommended that the pile should withstand a uniform lateral pressure acting on the pile. This uniform lateral pressure, the maximum value will be equal to uh, 10.5 the C undrained proposed by Frank in 1977. The minimum value was proposed by Polis, which is 7.7 .7 multiplied by the C undrained of the uh, soft layer. And the maximum value was proposed by Randolph 
which is equal to 1.94 the, the C untrained of the soft layer. This method could be applied in the case of the plastic flow of the soil past the piles in the ultimate load conditions. The, so the plasticity solutions, uh, the value of the lateral pressure in the plasticity solution is function in the untrained shear strength of the soft layer, while the methods proposed by Dupere and the, the lateral pressure was function in the embankment stress. The uh, fourth method in the pressure phase the method was proposed by the German recommendations. The German recommendation considered the effect of the lateral pressure, uh, calculate the lateral pressure function in the embankment stress and to consider also the undrained shear strength of the, of the soft layer. It considered the uh, undrained shear strength of the soft layer from the flow pressure approach, it calculates the lateral pressure from two approaches. The first approach is the flow pressure, which is function in the C untrained and to consider also the pile arrangement in the pile group using the calibration factor eta, which is calculated using the following chart function in the ratio between the pile center spacing and the diameter. It also calculated the lateral pressure from the second approach, which is the resulting air pressure distribution, where it calculates the active air pressure on one side of the pile and the passive air pressure on the other side. And using the difference between the uh, active air pressure and the passive air pressure, we can calculate the lateral pressure on the pile from the lateral soil movement using the equation, which is equal to the difference between the active air pressure and the lateral air pressure multiplied by P, which is the mean, uh, the minimum of the mean pile spacing square, normal to the force direction, or three times the pile diameter, or the thickness of the soft layer, or the total width of the pile cap divided by the number of the pile. The governing in the analysis will be the minimum uh, value of the lateral pressure calculated from the characteristic flow pressure, which is function in the undrained shear strength, or the characteristic resulting earth pressure, which is function in the value of the embankment stress. Third, we will talk about the displacement based method proposed by Stewart et al. in 1994. The displacement in the displacement based method. This method is based on the simple soil deformation mechanism proposed by Springman in 1989 and relates the lateral pressure on the pile on the approximate soil pile displacement. This method can be used to calculate the maximum bending moment and the pile cap deflection. We have equations to calculate the soil displacement and equations to calculate the pile displacement. Using the relative pile soil displacement, we can calculate the value of the lateral pressure PM using the following equation. We calculate the mean pressure function in the embankment stress and function in the pile diameter and the mean shear modulus of the soft clay layer and the thickness of the soft clay layer and the reduced shear modulus of the soft layer. After we calculate the mean pressure, we can calculate the, uh, pi, uh, the bending moment at the pile head. Also, we can calculate the bending moment at the interface between the soft and the stiff layer, which is uh, indicated by the M phase. Also, we can calculate the pile head deflection using the following equations. So we uh, talk about the uh, analytical and the empirical method. Now we will talk about the 3D numerical modeling for the passive loaded piles. We will use a case study, which is a centrifuge test. The objective here is that, uh, that we verify the finite element analysis to back calculate the real performance of the piles subjected to the passive horizontal loads. The, we, uh, the case study will be a centrifuge test. The principle, oh, we will talk uh, briefly about the principles of the centrifuge modeling. The centrifuge modeling, we can re re recreate the stresses and the strains in the prototype. Uh, we have to, uh, sorry, we need that the stresses and the strains in the prototype to be equal to the stresses and the strains in the centrifuge modeling. This can be achieved by subjecting the modeling to a centrifugal force equal to a multiplier N uh, multiplied by the gravitational force, which is much greater than the earth 
gravitational force. Let's suppose that the stress in the model, it's a vertical stress in the model equal to rho ngh phi uh, multiplied by the h of the model. We, uh, the uh, vertical stress in the prototype equal rho gh, uh, the height in the prototype. If we have the stress in the model, the centrifuge model equal to the stress in the prototype, so the height in the model will be the equal to the height in the prototype uh, divided by n, which is the multiplier uh, multiplied in the earth gravitational force. Also, if we have the equation of the time factor, which is equal to the uh, coefficient of consolidation multiplied by the time t over the h drainage square, we need the uh, time factor in the model equal to the time factor in the prototype. So we can re and uh, the h in the prototype equal the n multiplied by the h in the centrifuge model. So we can reach that the time in the centrifuge modeling equals the time in the prototype divided by the n square. So using the centrifuge model, we can uh, simulate the prototype in a reduced scale by subjecting the model by uh, to a centrifugal force, which is much greater than the Earth's gravitational force. And we can use it in the consolidation analysis as we need uh, uh, less time than in the prototype uh, scale. The uh, case study that we will talk about and make a numerical modeling about it was conducted by Ellis in, one, uh, in 1997. He conducted a series of uh, centrifuge tests to study the performance of the passive loaded pile group through a multi-layer subsoil. This was the general configuration of the centrifuge model conducted by uh, Ellis in, one, uh, in 1997. All the dimensions in this photo are in millimeter. This shows the reduced scale of the centrifuge model, and this shows the advantage of the, one of the main advantages of the uh, centrifuge modeling. He conducted a four tests to study the effect of the time of the construction of the embankment and the change in the thickness of the soft clay layer. We choose the test EA6 uh, with a clay depth equal 10 and the uh, construction period of the embankment was at 21 days in the, uh, we used this test in the numerical modeling. The back analysis of the centrifuge test EA6 was uh, we uh, back analyzed this uh, centrifuge test using a three-dimensional finite element model using a commercially available program, which is a Plexus 3D version 2020. The geometry of the finite element model was uh, in the following picture, uh, in the following figure, the height of the embankment was eight, the apartment wall thickness 0.63, uh, 0.635, and the thickness of the sand filter was one meter, the thickness of the soft clay layer equal 10 meters, and the thickness of the sand layer was 10 meter, and the length of the pile was 19 meters. And this was the plan of the piles and the apartment wall. The uh, distance between the pile center spacing uh, was 6.7, and the ratio between the pile center spacing and the diameter was 1.27. Uh, and the pile diameter was 1.27. The finite element model was conducted using the prototype scale, not using the centrifuge model scale. We use the following table to change, uh, to convert the uh, centrifuge model scale to the prototype scale. We mainly use the uh, uh, we mainly convert the linear dimension from the centrifuge model to the prototype using the scaling factor n. Also, we uh, have the stress and the strains in the prototype equal to the stress and the strains in the centrifuge model. Also, we consider the time in the model using this scaling factor uh, for the consolidation analysis using the factor n square, and the n was in the centrifuge test EA6 equal to 100. The simulation of the soil clusters in the 3D finite element model, we simulate the soft clay layer using the soft soil creep model. The drainage type was undrained A. The CC was equal to 0.43, CS equal 0.007, and C alpha equal 0.007. The C dash was equal to one, and the phi dash equal uh, 23. 
uh, uh, K-node for the normally consolidated equal 0.69 and the permeability coefficient in the horizontal direction equal to uh, 2.29 multiplied to 10 to the power negative four meter per day and was uh, the pre over burden pressure equal to 6.5 kilopascal. We also simulate the embankment and the sand filter and the sand substratum using the, uh, the hardening soil model with the following parameters in the following table. For the simulation of the structural elements, we simulate the structural elements using two different approaches. In the approach A, we simulate the piles the pile cap and the apartment wall using the volume elements. In the and we uh, express this in, as approach one. For the second approach, we simulate the piles as embedded pile element and simulate the pile cap and the apartment wall using the plate element. We model the initial stresses and the loading stages in the 3D model as follows. The, uh, the first phase was the calculation of the initial stresses of the normally loaded soil. Then we uh, installed the pile through the activation of the volume element in approach one or the pile element in approach two. Then we placed the filter layer and the pile cap and the apartment wall were constructed. Then we applied the embankment load with the, the time of the embankment construction was 21 days. Then we apply, uh, then we perform a consolidation analysis until 1000 days, which represent a 90% degree of consolidation. For the results, we study the effect of using the different simulation methods in the modeling of the structural elements as we compare the value of the lateral movement of the soft clay layer, which was measured in the centrifuge test with the value of the lateral movement calculated from the numerical modeling, either from approach one or from approach two. The lateral movement of the soft clay layer was calculated at the face of the pile cap. The maximum value was between the two piles. So we consider this value in the comparison between the centrifuge model and the numerical modeling. The maximum value measured by the centrifuge test was uh, 23 centimeter after the 21 days, which represents just after the embankment construction, while the maximum value in the centrifuge test after the thousand days was equal to 38 centimeter, which represented the 90 degree, uh, 90 percent uh, degree of consolidation, while the maximum value calculated in the approach one, in which the pile were simulated as a volume elements we are equal to 21 and 41 with a percentage of error equal to uh, a negative 8.6 in the 21 days and 7.8 in the uh, thousand days. Also in the approach to where the values was overestimated for the maximum lateral displacement with a maximum percentage of error uh, equal to 47 uh, percent in the thousand days in the simulation using approach two in which the piles were simulated as embedded beam element. This shows the main advantage of the simulation of the pile in using the volume elements and the percentage of error in the approach one was less than the percentage of errors in the approach two. The second we use the rear pile lateral displacement also in the comparison between the centrifuge model and the numerical modeling. The rear pile is a pile near to the embankment. Uh, the value of the maximum bilateral displacement in the 21 days equal to six, uh, 16 centimeter and, and in the thousand days equal to 25 centimeter. The percentage of error in the simulation using approach one it was equal to uh, negative 18 in the thousand days, while the percentage of error in the uh, approach two was equal to 16.8 in the 21 days. We also use the value of the bending moment of the <coughs> file uh, and the front file. The value of the bending moment, we can see here the good agreement between the centrifuge modeling and the numerical modeling either using approach one or approach two for the, in the comparison. The percentage of error in approach one, the maximum percentage of error was 13.4 at the thousand days 
while the maximum percentage of error in approach two was 23%. Also for the bending moment of the front file, there is a good agreement between the centrifuge modeling and the numerical modeling with the maximum percentage of error in approach to equal 26% uh, error in the 21 days. The conclusion, the performance of the passive files in a soft layer can be simulated with a nonlinear elastoplastic model, stress-dependent stiffness, constitutive low. The approach of the pile simulation had a noticeable effect on the both the soil and the pile performance. Modeling the pile as a volume element resulted in a better estimation for the soft soil lateral movement and the maximum pending moment of the pile as both the short time just after the impact the construction and the long term a 90% degree of consolidation. Also, the simulating the pile using an embedded, uh, embedded beam element showed a better prediction for the pile lateral movement at the short and the long term. Thank you. For any questions? Hey, do you finish? Yes. Perfect. Anyone have any question related with Plax modeling of the pile? He can ask Abdullah. Abdullah now is expert for that. He did his master and a lot of projects related with that. So if you have any question related with the pile, you can go ahead. If not, we can end the meeting now. And meet you next Friday. Nice to see you all. Thank you for attending. And yeah. Thank you, Mahmoud, for your Thank effort. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day.